Hi, and congratulations on completing week three in systematic theology. Uh, we're, we're working into that mid part of the course, and I think that we're coming along well. Uh, grades are still very strong, and I appreciate all the hard work that each of you is putting in. Uh, I wanted to just touch on a couple of quick points to wrap up week three. Uh, first, on your discussion posts, continue to refine the post and look for a hook something that we can engage easily in discussion about. So as you write it, think about what is my, my big theme, and then how can I tease someone into coming and engaging with me on a subject? Uh, often a personal note or some kind of personal relationship you have to the topic or uh, how we might um, use the topic in modern ministry. Those are all great hooks. Another is an, an illustration uh, on the topic that can help us to engage. And I did notice that engagement this week diminished a little bit. Uh, that's common during the middle part of the course, and I want to encourage you to fight it, uh, to make time over the weekend uh, and be sure to engage with others. Now, it was Labor Day weekend, and I know that everyone had to balance uh, family responsibilities with school load, and I do un understand that as well. Um, on our discussions, you had two different ones you could do. One, a misunderstanding about a characteristic of God. Uh, whenever you have a misunderstanding post, which we will have another one like it in week four, be sure to spend some time in your conclusion talking about how the contemporary church or your church or your ministry can help to combat this misunderstanding. I think that kind of brings us full cycle. We do our academic review, we do our big C church review, and then we do our what can we do in our microcosm uh, about correcting the misunderstanding. Uh, for those who did the human language, and, and that's always a minority, uh, I thought that everyone did, did a good job on both the misunderstanding and the human language. Uh, but on the hu human language, we want to make sure to spend time um, not only discussing how difficult it is to describe God in our language, in our human understanding, uh, but a discussion of God's anthropomorphic qualities that are preserved in the Bible is helpful. Then looking at assignment 3.1, um, always look for differences between Grudem and Erickson and other theologies that you might use. Don't just echo one another. To come up with a deeper assignment, we want to make sure to use uh, quotes from, from, from the reading, quotes from outside research, and biblical support. But a better critique is really to hone in on, after you've done a summary, dive deeply uh, onto a couple ways that Erickson and Grudem are different in their understanding of that attribute. That makes for a better critical paper and makes us better scholars. And then a finally on assignment 3.2, um, again scores were very high, but the, the assignment called for exploring how pantheonism and deism um, are offshoots of your understanding of immanence and transcendence. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that you spent some time and marked off, that was the big de deduction this week, uh, if you did not talk about pantheonism and deism and how those can be understood as uh, heretical understandings of immanence and transcendence if they're not used correctly. Uh, all in all, a great week. Uh, we're through the first third of the course uh, and into that middle section. Uh, I look forward to seeing what uh, everyone comes up with in week four, and I'll talk to you soon.